yeah, welcome to Game of the Month Club. This month's game is called The Witness. Welcome. I'm going to be presenting The Witness today. Uh, I may have made this presentation entirely too long because there's a lot to talk about. So my strategy for this is to just talk until someone tells me to stop talking. <laughs> so here we go. Just a fun disclaimer, I am going to spoil this game in its entirety. <laughs> so if you didn't beat this game, I'm sorry, but a lot of things are going to be spoiled for you. Or you could leave now if you want, I guess. <laughs> So I, I, I want to get started just by playing the trailer. I think that this kind of outlines what the game is better than I could explain it. So I'm just going to play the trailer. <clears throat> this is a release trailer. This the, is a release trailer. Uh, <laughs> announcement trailer. started on the game The Witness, I just want to talk about a game that I think was heavily heavily influenced the idea for The Witness, which is a game called Mist. You guys all know what I'm talking about. Um, so like just here's an example of like here's the Mist Island, here's the Witness Island. They're very very similar. You've got a big mountain, you've got different quadrants of this island that you have to figure out, and the way that they begin and the way that you play them is also very similar. So Myst, uh, I do have it, is a PC game that came out in 1993. Um, you basically start out on this island with no explanation for how you got there. I think you start out like on the dock, which is like like here. You start out there and you're like, what am I doing here? And <laughs> nothing is explained. You basically just have to wander around. And uh, you eventually uh, find this library and you find these books in this library and you find these two dudes that are trapped in books and they're imploring you I, oh you have to find these pages and you have to release us from these books and so you end up going to you know these little uh, quadrant areas and you have to solve some puzzles there and then there are portal books in, in, in every uh, one of these places that transports you to another island you complete a bunch of puzzles on that island you find a bunch of pages and then you have to free these dudes from their Entrapment, uh, but you don't. You you only figure out all of this by just exploring, or you give up and you never figure out what the game is about. <laughs> <laughs> Which, similar to the witness, is entirely possible. Another uh, game that I want to talk about briefly is Braid. Which is the first game that uh, Jonathan Blow uh, created. He's also the creator of The Witness. Uh, so you all know that this is a 2D puzzle game that involves uh, reversing time in order to solve puzzles and collect little puzzle pieces. So after he was finished with Braid, he created the game The Witness. And so this is the official game description that I found on Steam, and I'm just going to read it to you. Uh, you wake up alone on a strange island full of puzzles that will challenge and surprise you. You don't remember who you are, and you don't remember how you got here, but there's one thing you can do. Explore the island in hope of discovering clues, regaining your memory, and somehow finding your way home. The Witness is a single-player game in an open world with dozens of locations to explore and over 500 puzzles. This game respects you as an intelligent player, and it treats your time as precious. There is no filler. Each of these puzzles brings its own new idea into the mix. So, this is a game full of ideas. Uh, and it certainly is full of ideas. We'll get into all of that. I wanted to start by showing you the beginning of the game. 
so you end up in this tunnel, and then the game teaches you that you have to draw lines from a circle to a little ending nub. And you quickly learn that, that this is all you do in the whole game. <laughs> uh, and then these, this one's a little bit more complicated, it's kind of like a maze. And then you find these wires that light up, and uh, then you figure out, oh, the wires are lighting up all of these panels. And so you have to solve more puzzles in order to light up more panels. Another wire. Oh, this one's even more complicated. up finding this door and you're like oh there's other wires that I have to solve and I'm sure they light up if I figure out where the puzzles are I literally recorded this last night so. <laughs> So now you can open the door. Door. Now you basically have the whole, after that uh, little castle part, you basically have the whole entire island available to you to explore. So now it's basically an open world game. But very quickly, you come across this door right after you finish all the easy puzzles. And this is a puzzle that clearly you can't solve yet because you haven't learned any of the rules of how to solve this game. And this is basically the entirety of The Witness, is it's trying to teach you, without saying anything, how to solve all of these various puzzles. And uh, what inevitably happens is you will get you know, a certain distance into one section, and then you'll find uh, some sort of element some like puzzle element that you haven't learned yet and you get stuck and so you are encouraged to just kind of explore around the rest of the island until you like find the answer to this the, the, the other element and then you think oh yeah now I can go back and I can solve that other thing and so the goal here is to learn about and solve as many puzzles as you can and unlock the mysteries of the island as was explained in the synopsis of the game and I just wanted to you know, humble brag, my nice. personal progress. <laughs> uh, I believe there are like 677 or something puzzles total, and I got, uh, I think, 625. So not too bad. Not too shabby. Still more to get, though. But I think I would say that I am pretty much done with this game, so I'll never 100% it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that I would just explain all of the puzzle rules. First, spoilers of the night. All right, so the cube puzzles. The point uh, is to separate all the cubes by color into their own sections, as you can see by these lines here. Uh, the hexagons, you are supposed to use one single line to cover all the hexagons, which are in the path of the line that you can draw. Okay, so the Tetris shapes, you're supposed to draw the Tetris shape with the line. So yeah, it's like it's like this piece is, is represented here, and then there's like these two three line pieces, and then you can just kind of like combine shapes together in order to make like this super big shape. So the, the yellow ones are, you're supposed to make that shape, and then there's these little blue ones that you're supposed to subtract from the shape that kind of makes it even more complicated. Like, I hear all your internal groans. Yeah, um, sorry. 
And then if the shape is like tilted a little bit, that means it could be in any orientation. And just to illustrate, um, this is me. When I played yeah. this a year ago, I was trying to figure out all of the Tetris puzzles, and I couldn't do them mentally, so I had to write them down on a sheet of paper. So this kind of just looks like I'm a crazy person. All right, moving on. The Y shape. That's this little, this little guy here. This will uh, cancel out one element of the puzzle that's wrong. So this is back to the cube thing. You want to separate all the cubes, but like this one's wrong. So like these two things will cancel and then the puzzle is correct now. <laughs> okay, so starbursts. There are these little, these little starburst thingies. And uh, so the point of this is you have to group each color into pairs. So there's the orange one, there's two here, there's two here, there's two purple ones here, here, green ones here, here. Everyone got that? Cool. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> Starbursts. The triangles. This one was really hard to figure out because the triangle puzzles are just like these scattered yeah. little things on the ground. They're called forgotten puzzles and uh, you're just supposed to kind of like look at them and then just kind of guess what to do because it doesn't really teach you very well what the rules of the triangles are. But the rules of the triangles are like for example this is one triangle so only one side of the square should be, you know, covered by a line. Uh, this one's two, so there's two here. This one's three, so there's three things covering it. Damn, this is like and an IQ test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. So there are also other puzzles that require you to pay attention to the environment around you. One of them is mirror puzzles which you use these rock formations or trees to like figure out what the pattern is. So this person is like looking at some rocks in the distance. They're going, oh, uh, it looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then drawing lines and outlining the shapes of the rocks. Uh, so that's mirror puzzles. We have shadow puzzles, which are uh, some shadows either on the puzzle itself oh, or like... That's so <laughs> the, so tricky. Yeah. That's how you solve those. There are audio puzzles, which I think you can hear. It's like a bird. Yeah, okay, so it's like a bird chirping and there's like nice varying bird. pitch. Uh, but yeah, so there's like birds chirping or like ambient <laughs> sounds happening and then you're supposed to like figure out what pitch they're all in and then you just draw like the, the lines. Um, and then later there will be like distractions, like 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 cell phone calls, like while well, the the birds chirping and all kinds of stuff. And then you're supposed to take all the things that you learned and combine them together and do all of these terribly hard <laughs> combined puzzles. Most of these puzzles can be found on, uh, on like bunker doors or like there's a middle village area that has a bunch of like the combined puzzles together. I think the the middle village area is intended to be done last. Like, once you learn all the rules, then you can pretty much do the whole village. Um, but yeah, this is this is where it starts to get into crazy town, and a lot of people rage quit, so... <laughs> uh, and then in order to, quote-unquote, beat the game, uh, you have to solve seven lasers that are hidden throughout the, uh, the island. And each section has its own laser, and so, like, there's, like, for this, the cube uh, area, there's, like, a, a whole area that's just cube puzzles, and then they might, like, you know, combine some other elements to it. And then there's, like, the, the hardest puzzle, and then you'll unlock a laser, and then it'll point to this mountain. And if you get seven of them, then you can gain entrance to the top of the mountain, and you get to solve even more and even harder puzzles. And then uh, you eventually will get to the end. So, the way that these puzzles work is... Just utter madness. So this is like, <laughs> this is the, the, the cube uh, cube puzzles, but there's like, you know, weird glitchy lights going on. So uh, I remember I had to like take screenshots of this and then like figure out what the cube colors really were um, because they were just like flashing all over the place and causing, you know, migraines and that kind of thing. Uh, okay, so this one is uh, six panels all in a row and they all have different elements to them but they all have the same solution. So you have to like figure out what that solution is. And then uh, this one is like uh, a line that you draw and then you have to walk on it. So you have to figure out like what line to draw so that you can like walk through the whole thing. 
and then there's like these weird uh, puzzles that are like Whoa, your field of vision is obscured a little bit and you have to like, <laughs> draw the line so you can get to the puzzles so that you can actually solve the puzzles. <laughs> And then you're just like, what the hell is going on? I can barely see these things. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's some crazy, like, combining puzzles and everything's kind of falling apart when you get inside the mountain. And then, once you get to the very bottom of the mountain, you get introduced to this whole new concept called column puzzles, which is uh, puzzles that are, like, instead of being flat, they're, they're represented on columns, so you can't see the whole puzzle when you're trying to solve it, so it makes it uh, very challenging uh, to uh, solve. Huh. So like, you get to the bottom and you're like, I'm at the bottom, and then you're like, oh god damn it, it's a whole new concept that I have to learn again. <laughs> uh, so that's column puzzles. And if you can get through all of that, you get to the end of the game, which is you get inside this elevator, and you fly around the whole island, and there are some uh, kind of creepy voices that like say weird things, and uh, the whole the whole island basically resets. Like you you watch all of the all the puzzles reset. Like you get to the end of this game, and you're like, I didn't figure out what the point of this island was or how I got here. I just did the ending, and I ended up having to start all over again. So this must not be the ending. Maybe I have to complete more puzzles, um, which is what I got from this. Uh, and it turns out that there are more, there is a lot more to this island than just all these puzzles that you have to solve. And uh, one of them is uh, video logs. Uh, video logs are located in the bunkers, the aforementioned bunkers that have the really hard puzzles on them. If you are able to solve them, then you get these uh, puzzles that are drawn, or puzzle solutions that are drawn on pieces of paper. Huh. And you, you basically just have to like, you know, draw them uh, or take, take screenshots of them so that you can insert them somewhere else. And then eventually if you wander around enough, you will come across this theater, which is underground. It's under the, uh, the windmill. And you've got this little panel right here that you can insert all of the uh, little video log puzzle solutions that you find. And there are six patterns in total to find. And I'm just going to go through what all these videos are that you can find. Uh, the first video is this guy called James Burke, and he is talking about connections. And he is talking about trying to find meaning in the world <coughs> via science versus art. And his argument is that art is easier to understand because it contains human interpretation of the world. And so it's easier to digest. And then science is a lot harder to understand because you strip away all emotion and you're left only with facts. So um, this is, real quick, this is like one of my favorite documentary series. Like, so it's, really? So Connections, it's basically, it, it wasn't really shown in the United States, but it's from the 70s, like a BBC documentary that's about just like the history of technology and how things are connected to each other. We were saying earlier that like, wasn't some of the soundtrack? Some of the soundtrack, yeah. So the music in the Connections documentary is like very... Uh, uh, some of the same songs are used in the soundtrack of um, of The Witness. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming Jonathan Blow enjoyed it a lot and made <laughs> some of the sound cues. Yeah. So maybe he used some of the soundtrack uh, okay. from that. Yeah. I was wondering, like, I was trying to connect, like, why are all these videos in this game? This one, I wasn't really sure why it was in here. <laughs> but this makes a lot of sense. All right. Uh, Video number two is Richard Feynman, and it's two lectures. The first lecture is him talking about different elements of science and like how, how do we connect all of these uh, aspects of science together to form an understanding of the world. Um, for example, like how does a chemist view the world versus how does an astrophysicist view the world? Do they ever communicate with each other to you know sh share knowledge and that kind of thing? Uh, the second lecture, he's uh, older, and he's talking about his uh, view of religion. He does, he's apparently not a very religious man. Uh, he thinks that we should all view religion like science and assume that everything in the text could possibly be wrong or uh, fallible. Uh, video number three. This one was actually my favorite video. It's not a lecture. It's a scene from a movie where a man has lit a candle, and he's on uh, one end of this uh, thing. I called it a canal. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Uh, but it's, he appears to be like doing some sort of ritual where he lights a candle at one end, and he has to like physically touch the wall with his hand, and then he has to walk all the way to the other end of this canal without the candle blowing out. 
and it's very, it's like, it's probably like half an hour long, it's pretty long, but um, <laughs> a lot of these videos are very long. Um, so he's like slowly walking to the end of this uh, canal, and uh, like ha about halfway uh, through, like he almost gets to the end and the candle like blows out, and he's visibly frustrated, and he almost like, like he stands there and he looks at it, and then he almost like just takes his lighter and lights it and cheats to just, you know, complete this ritual, but he eventually turns around, starts all over, and then lights the candle, does the ritual correctly, and then gets to the end. Um, I really like this video because I think it's the most relatable to this game because it's very tempting to just look up answers and try to cheat because it's very difficult. Uh, but I think eventually you get more satisfaction out of figuring out all the solutions, <clears throat> you know, even if it takes a horribly long amount of time to do so. You will end up being more satisfied if you can actually figure out all the answers to all the puzzles. Uh, mm -hmm. The last lecture is this lady called Gangaji, I think. She's giving a talk in Australia, and her basic message is to stop looking for what you want and just live and interact in the present. And this is kind of a, a Buddhist teaching of uh, just enjoying what you have and not trying to always be looking for, for more. Okay, so those are all the videos. Um, well, not all of them. Skipped one. Uh, so one of the things that Jonathan Blow want, really wanted to uh, have in a game was this epiphany moment, where when you find it, the game looks completely different to you now. So I'm going to play a video of said epiphany moment. So you at the top of the mountain. Uh, so yeah, this is the epiphany moment when you realize that there are puzzles all around you all of the time. And you realize quickly that environment puzzles are fucking everywhere. So this is me walking around, and I just noticed <coughs> that the bushes were in the shape of a puzzle. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Uh, so it's me trying to click on it, I'm not in the right orientation. That's the finicky thing about these puzzles, is that you have to like look at them at exactly the right... Boom! Oh. <laughs> so nice sound effect. Sound yeah. Very satisfying. Uh, this is when you're in the bamboo forest, and then oh, you're just like... <laughs> you just look at the flowers a certain way, and then that's one of them. Uh, and then, even interacting with the world, you find out that there are puzzles when you move things around. So this one is in the shadow. What? So you're like rotating. What? It is nuts. <laughs> well, you're waiting for the ending. Wow. <laughs> so there's a boat that you can travel around the island to, and then there's this giant long one on the castle. Whoa. Oh my god. Oh, you gotta wait for the angle. Oh, yeah, you just have to. Johnny Blow. Oh my god! The shadow has this thing. This is beautiful. What happens when you unlock it? I'll get to that. <laughs> uh, before I do, you realize that environment puzzles are also in the videos that you watch. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, you. Uh, yeah. Okay, so. No! Oh my god! <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> wow. It's 
fills me with so much joy. There's one. Did you find these on your own? Uh, these in particular, no, I, I found them online. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, it's piece of... Okay, so there's a third one. <laughs> and I had to speed this one up because it was uh, really long. So you start the big movie at the beginning, and then you run. Oh, wow. Wow. This is for the like this. Oh, oh my yes. god. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a lot. So. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> And then there's 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 one. Uh, this is nostalgia. At the very end, so this is the, the 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 behind the theater, and there's like these little artifacting things happening, and so there's there's like this window, this circular window, and then like since the video is kind of distorted, like you can like draw a line from the distortion from behind the video. I think he's just a troll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's, a, he's a fucking troll. Okay, so uh, you might have seen these obelisks all over the uh, island, and you wondered, what are these for? Well, it turns out that they are all clues to environmental puzzles that you can find. So when you complete an environmental puzzle, it'll turn uh, yellow to say that you already found it. Um, and so uh, they're they're grouped into sections, so like... All the all the environmental puzzles on this face are like over there, and you should go find them over there. And then all the ones on on this face are like over there. So they're they're kind of clues of where you can find them all. And these are these are uh, yellow before you unlock them, or they're they're yellow when you find them. Uh, when they're not, when you haven't found them yet, they're just kind of like little little shadows wow. mm -hmm. uh, that you can look at, um, nice. and they kind of give you a. Like, here's the shape that you're going to draw, but yeah. not really any indication of where it is or what's representing it. Um, but yeah, these these puzzles are all over the place. And once you <laughs> find one, you just go fucking crazy, like, trying to find them all. <laughs> uh. So, at any given moment, you may be wondering, like, where do I go? Uh, I don't even know what I haven't solved yet. Uh, in the middle of the island, there is a lake. And it, it very elegantly, like, lays out... Uh, a map of the island and uh, so there are lanterns in the lake and those represent all of the lasers and if they are not on that means that you haven't completed a laser there yet uh, the white flowers represent audio recordings um, and if they're closed that means you haven't found it if they're open that means you have found it uh, the yellow flowers are the rec recordings that are in the caves uh, underground uh, the fountains are the obelisks um, and if they're like shooting up really tall that means that you've completed it uh, there are these like little triangle leaves uh, kind of scattered on the lake, and there are the forgotten triangle puzzles. And if they're like orange, that means that you haven't found it yet. And if it's kind of brown, that means you have. And then there are clams that are kind of hidden under the lake. And if they're open, that means that you have found a video recording. So there, are, it's all just clues of like where 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 everything is. Uh, okay, so as if all of that wasn't enough. There is something called the challenge, and the challenge is like a super duper duper difficult uh, thing that you can do if you're a masochist like I am. Uh, so if you solve all 11 lasers on the island, then when you get to the top of the island, you'll see this wire that's like a lit wire, and it's kind of traversing all the way down past all of the puzzles that you solved, and it gets down to here, where there's this little statue of a man that's like trying to make a triangle puzzle. And if you solve this triangle puzzle, then this like door will open and you can open it and you enter the caves. And once you solve all of the puzzles in the caves, you get to the challenge. And uh, the challenge is a seven minute uh, challenge, I guess, uh, where you have to solve uh, 14 puzzles in a row. And they are procedurally generated, and you have to solve them all in seven minutes. And there's no way to cheat because they're all uh, just every time you restart this challenge, they all reset, 
and that they're just generated by an algorithm. It is impossibly difficult. Uh, uh, it took me maybe, I want to say, 50 to 100 tries to actually complete this. <laughs> um, and I'm, yeah, I'm just going to play the video of uh, You also can't pause the game either. Yeah, if you pause the game, then, uh, all, then everything turns off and you have to start all over. Uh, so I'm just going to play, play the challenge, which I, I didn't, this wasn't my playthrough, this was another person's playthrough. So this is real time, seven minutes in hell. <laughs> so you basically just have to internalize, just wrote all of the, <laughs> all of the things that you learned on the island, and you have to do them really, really quickly. <laughs> Song yes. So the first song is called Anitra's Dance. Uh, I'm not sure who composed it. <laughs> and this guy's like really, really fast at doing these first puzzles. It took me a lot longer to do them. But they're different every time? Yeah, different every time. Procedurally generated. Aren't they the same? They're all the same concepts, but they're all differently generated. So they'll use like the same mechanics and the same amount of things that you suppose is what it's scrambled. Yeah, scattered around. And then yeah, I've got to solve all these things. Yeah, I have nightmares where like this song is playing. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is interesting because of the three of these puzzles, only one of them is actually solvable. Oh, wow. No! <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? I'm serious. <laughs> you just got lucky? Uh, you know, you do it a bunch of times and you figure out what the patterns are. <laughs> He's like, not that one. He's definitely a troll. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's definitely a troll. <laughs> you got it. There you go. <laughs> Uh, and now this this procedurally generated maze, uh, where like doors are closing on you. And the maze is actually the same path. As yeah. The so puzzle. like there was a, a puzzle at the beginning that had the two hexagons, and that was actually the path that you're supposed to take in this maze. And the two hexagons represent where these two triangle puzzles are that you're supposed to solve. <laughs> <laughs> When I did this challenge, I thought that the triangle puzzles were the hardest to solve, and they took me the most amount of time. This is so upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> should, I just, should I stop the video now? No, no. Oh, no. We're all invested. Okay. Yeah. Well. And so this guy's like frantically just trying to find the second puzzle. <laughs> Are you guys all as sweaty as I am right now? Yeah. <laughs> There's a puzzle. Where is it? Oh, oh, there it is. Oh man, these puzzles are so hard. They know how much time they have? Uh, yeah, it's based mm -hmm. on the song. Oh, the song, nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, can you just explain the mechanic of the triangle one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, here. since this is one triangle, only one one side of the square can be touched by the light. Oh, oh, oh yeah. two means two, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, two means two and three means three. I don't think there's a four. That would be impossible. Oh my god. And now he has to traverse through the maze again and figure out where the other side is. And you get to the dreaded column puzzles! Uh, <laughs> like, I can't see it, but I'm gonna try. You're a masochist, man. 
Hall of the Mountain King was an inspired choice. I know, I saw that. Oh my god. So this part, since the Hall of the Mountain King speeds up as it plays, you get so panicky. <laughs> Did you play this with the, like, I had to turn the sound off. <laughs> I just, I didn't know how much time I had. I had oh, like, I, I kept it on because it was a good reminder of how much time I had. Did uh, you produce this independently or with the studio? I think it was a studio. The studio. It was a studio? Yeah. 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 Can you imagine yeah. communicating this vision? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean that sincerely, not even oh, personally. Sorry. Like, this is an incredible vision to produce, <clears throat> and especially with the team. There's a group of artists and designers and a lot of different creative practices. Yeah. But but just the concept behind it and the amount of layers here. What did that story want to do? I don't know. It's like we're gonna get the lost. <laughs> Inside the box is the final video log, and you're you're probably thinking, well, this better be good, <laughs> given how much time and effort I have put into the challenge, the 100 or so attempts that I made that reached seven minutes long. What is what is this video? The video is called "The Secret of Psalm 46." What is the secret of Psalm 46? This is a presentation by uh, Brian Moriarty, who is a game developer, at the Game Developers Conference in 2002. Uh, this is not a recording of that um, conference, but it's a narration <coughs> by this guy named Bruce Matson, and the accompanying video is a solar eclipse from the start of the moon about to eclipse the sun, all the way to totality. And how long does that take? 59 minutes. <laughs> and so, what, what, what's, what's in this, what's in this video? Um, a bunch of stuff. Basically, the video is about Easter eggs and their appearance and history. Uh, the first Easter egg that he talks about is this children's book called Masquerade which uh, I think was about a rabbit or something, but the point of the book was, is that it was filled with elaborate illustrations, maybe like 15 or so, that all held clues to this hidden treasure, which was like this golden uh, bunny rabbit that was encrusted with jewels that was like buried somewhere, and it caused this like craze in like the 1970s where people bought these books and they went insane trying to find this rabbit and uh once the rabbit was found like no one really cared about the book because people only bought it in order to find the thing just you know the easter egg and how it makes people crazy uh he then talks about uh bach who is enormous uh music and math dork who liked to put uh math-based easter eggs in all of his symphonies uh and then the major bulk of this video is the conspiracy of who wrote shakespeare so the conspiracy is this idea that someone other than the William Shakespeare from history wrote all of the uh, Shakespearean 
plays and all of the things. A lot of people think that Sir Francis Bacon wrote uh, Shakespeare. A lot of people think that it was a uh, like a group of uh, more intelligent people that wrote it. Uh, there's a further conspiracy that the King James translation of the Bible was actually translated by quote unquote Shakespeare, which is these uh, editors that uh, were alive at the time uh, the Bible was being translated to English. And then it ends by talking about Psalm 46 itself, uh, which 46 words from the beginning of the psalm is the word shake, and 46 words from the end of the psalm is the word spear. <laughs> which I found the psalm, King James Version, and I circled sake, and I circled spear, and I counted them, and yes, that is correct. <laughs> um, but there are some takeaway quotes that I got from Psalm 46. First takeaway quote is, Now please don't come away from this lecture thinking that the key to awesome game design is the installation of Easter eggs. Awesome things don't hold anything back. Awesome things are rich and generous. The treasure is right there. Uh, so, like, it kind of contradicts, like, like don't, don't put a bunch of Easter eggs in a game, but also this game is just Easter eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I don't know, conflicting, uh, conflicting ideas for this uh, particular video, um, but a fascinating video, nonetheless. Um, but there is one part of this video that is really, really infuriating. And there's an environmental puzzle, which is behind the theater. So the solar eclipse starts as a full circle. So you draw this line, and then it goes from white to black. And so you draw it, and then you have to sit there for 59 minutes <laughs> while the eclipse happens in front of your face and you wait for the, the circle to go from solar to fully eclipsed and uh, yeah this is so this is like the most Jonathan Blow being a troll I think of all time uh, if you want 100% this game at least 59 minutes of your time will be wasted doing this. All right, so now we've gotten to the quote-unquote real end of the game. And uh, in order to get to the real end of the game, you have to actually start at the beginning. So let's start back at the beginning again. Is that accessible in the beginning? Yeah. yeah. You can just start the game and do this. What? <laughs> yeah. A yeah. <laughs> standard. So, um, so the quote-unquote real game end of the game is that uh, you're a playtester, and you are playtesting this whole island, and presumably Wait. other people are going to be playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> So there's like all these blueprints on the ground of like people drawing puzzles and then you like walk through and you see these like screens of like computer screens of like they're monitoring the whole island. And uh, so once you get all the way to the end of this whole sequence, uh, then this video plays. Uh, you wake up in the real world. Oh. <laughs> And you realize that you've been, like, hooked up to a computer. <laughs> oh, 
So this is portal plus the Stanley Parable. <laughs> yeah. With lines. It is. Lots of lines. So like this guy is like walking through this uh, house or something, and then he starts seeing like uh, circles everywhere. And he's like, oh, it must be, it must be an environmental puzzle. <laughs> the game was a game the whole time. <laughs> it seemed kind of silly to me, honestly, but I did I'd kind of identify with this guy wandering around, like, seeing puzzles everywhere, so... I don't know. Equal parts satisfied and dissatisfied, I would say. Um, that's that's my whole that's my whole spiel. That's my whole presentation.